Hey, Plant Pals, I'm Mike the Kid of Gardener, and today's video is on what I'm going to be up to inside this winter. I'm not only doing the WIG, the Winter Indoor Grow 2022 collaboration with GT Junior Grows Alaska, but I'm also taking care of my inside garden and starting things. This is an orange hat tomato plant. It's produced tons of tomatoes for me, but they're starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller in size. They used to be... Uh, well, three times that size, but that's what happens when the plant gets older. This is a determinate variety. I could keep it going, but it's going to produce less and less tomatoes as time goes on. And I just don't feel like babysitting it. It was a fun experiment. This was a like a $14 unit that I got on sale at Amazon. I just wanted to give it a shot just to try something different. It's normally meant for soil. It's not a... a a totally hydroponic unit because what you do is you just put water in the reservoir that wicks up into the top which typically holds soil but I put cocoa core vermiculite perlite and put hydro, uh, hydroponic plant food solution to give the plant nutrition and you can see how nice and thick the stem is there's a healthy happy plant and again it'll still you can see the flower buds those are tomatoes they'll keep growing but I'm kind of itching to, there's some uh, buds there, some buds there. You know, it's touching the top of this unit. This is a very short unit. It's only like uh, 10 inches tall. But, you know, it just sits, this is the one that sits next to the Arrow Garden Sprout. That's next to my sofa. There's some of the remaining last orange hat tomatoes. And you can see how they're starting to get tinier and tinier. <laughs> and that'll keep happening. And this thing is keeps touching the light every day. I might, you know, that's what happens when you're a, a gardener and you grow things, and you get kind of bored with them because they're, especially when they're successful. This thing literally, I harvest off it every day. I have bags, gallon Ziploc bags full of uh, basil in my freezer. But it is a cool little plant. It looks like a little tree because it's so woody, and the, you know, like I said, it grows so fast. Got my little dinosaur friend, he's guarding the tree. But I'm thinking I'm going to put something else in here. And I'm going to replace this unit with one of those uh, Zimhu units. And I'm thinking of growing the, the, uh, The botanical interest, uh, what was that called again? The the dazzling blue kale that uh, Miss Linda Tenog, the New Orleans gardener, gifted me. And plus it's also, right now, because it's the Winter Indoor Grow 2022 collaboration that has started. It starts on the, uh, the 7th. It's the 6th now. So I'm going to get the unit set up, and I'll drop the seeds on the, uh, the, well, I'll drop the seeds today, because <laughs> so I can get it, because I'm having to film all this <laughs> for the collaboration. I've got, like, 20 different things going right now, but, uh, either, well, I might do it tomorrow. We'll see. I'm going to get everything set up, and then probably drop the seeds tomorrow, because i got about four other units I have to set up, because, <laughs> be right back, so you can see this pepper plant. This pepper plant that I brought inside, I washed it, I sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide and, and soap and sprayed it outside before I brought it in, brought it inside, cleaned it off, cleaned off the roots, and yet it's still somehow I brought in aphids. So I have like aphid infesting all my uh, tomato plants inside here. They don't seem to be interested in the, the uh, Cuban oregano or the peppers, thankfully. They've left those alone and they've semi left some of these on there once in a while i'll see one on there because they kind of travel around because what happens is i spray the plant that they're on with alcohol and that gets rid of them off the one plant and they run to another plant and it's just back and forth so i'm kind of because i don't want bugs in my house they're like i said they're not many but it's annoying it's gross i don't want any and i don't want them to like take hold and you know if i give up the battle they'll <laughs> go nuts 
and then I'll have to get rid of everything. So I'm thinking that I'm going to get rid of all the tomatoes in because that's what they're hanging out on. All the tomatoes in my house, which is quite a few. Got tomatoes here, tomatoes here, tomatoes here. <laughs> Got tomatoes everywhere. They, of course, don't like the mint. You know, I had, um, it started off, I had fungus gnats from a plant I brought inside from the store. I got rid of those, fortunately. Every once in a while I'll see, you know, maybe one flying about, but it's not an issue. They're, you know, I've been, I've, it's rarely, I mean, might, might see one a month. I don't know where they're coming from, but, you know, they, I think they come in from outside. And since it's wintertime, I haven't seen any. You know, I have these uh, sticky things here, and anything you see that's stuck to it is just from plant material that's fallen or me dropping leaves, or whatever, when I'm putting things in and out of the, the thing here, or a leaf will die up and drop off and fall on the thing, but there are no living mats that are attaching themselves, which is great. But I'm keeping them around just in case, because, you know, like I said, I don't want any comebacks. No, no returns here. <laughs> no, no room at the end for the uh, the fungus gnats. And then I had spider mites, and uh, got rid of those. That was easy to get rid of. I just sprayed a little alcohol, wiped on. They were, you know, they they like to hang out on the, the light of the grow unit, and then they go from the light to the plant. I guess they for getting warmth for to regulate their body heat or whatever. And I sprayed alcohol on the, uh, you know, very strong. 91% uh, alcohol on a paper towel and wiped it on the light being careful not to you don't want to saturate a light or you know and then you fry your unit that would be good even though 91% alcohol doesn't contain hardly any water but you know safety first so yeah I uh, <laughs> I uh, wiped the, uh, the, 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 the the unit down with alcohol and I wiped the leaves by hand and there was like three spider mites I guess that were living on there and they went up to the upper room and haven't had a problem since. But the aphids are an issue because, be right back. Like I had them all over this thing. And got rid of it. But then they went over to my deep water culture tub area, which is across the way across the room. Like 40 feet away. So they somehow found... A better place to roost so now I'm having to try to take care of that over there but what I found out was oops I'm gonna break my neck and I'll show these little tomato guys here that are growing which is bumming me out because like I said I'm probably gonna get rid of them all but uh, they have occasionally attacked this basil and then what happens is I get rid of them and then the plant happily returns back to life but then sometimes they return again, and then it's just it's a whole never-ending story. But uh, they seem to be leaving. See these peppers right here, so it's kind of a time jump. <laughs> if I show this before, I show the uh, the progress of the other ones. I mean, in the past, <laughs> it was you know chaotic, but yeah, you'll see that these are doing very well. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, yeah, they uh, they they were hanging out here. I saw these; they were like little green guys with long legs and I got rid of them making sure I don't see any because yeah it's a real pain and what happened was they see how bare this and see you can see the combat once you get rid of them life wants to return and uh they were sucking the life out of the plant and so the plant, this this plant, this tomato typically would already have be starting to produce tomatoes. It's just growing taller and taller because what happens is it doesn't have the life energy to produce the tomatoes because it's busy fighting the the pests, which is not great. So, be right back. You can see I haven't had any pest pressure on the peppers at all, which is great. They apparently don't like peppers. There's a little pepper down there, but. They love tomatoes. Oops. Won't do my light thing here. But see, these were very healthy cuttings. And the aphids have sucked the life out of these things. 
So I'm gonna get rid of the tomatoes and grow some basil in here. Cause you know they tip, they don't seem to like basil that much, and can't really think of anything else I feel like growing right now. It's a little depressing, you know. You you've grown something for months, like these. Again, the same issue. The reason why these are so tall is because everything down below gets attacked. You know, and then I get rid of the problem, and then they come back and so you can see like they're little these are tomato buds focus these right here are what are gonna turn into tomatoes and so yeah it's kinda depressing that I might have to just get rid of these plants here because for one thing they're unwieldy they're super tall <laughs> I'm six foot this is you know above my head which it's not six foot in the unit because the, you know it's you know about three feet itself so these are like three feet tall plants but are supposed to be you know you, you can grow these in an arrow garden which can grow just like you know I grew these in my arrow garden harvest which only gets up to uh, like 10 inches tall 12 inches something like that and these are like three feet tall because of the stupid bugs and see you can see all the little tomato buds so it's ready it wants to but again I don't want bugs in my house and then next to it is of course is my pepper plant, which my help my uh, Fresno plant, which again they don't seem to like. That's just going nuts. This thing, this plant is huge. <laughs> it's like a two foot, two foot from here all the way back here. <laughs> this is all the same plant, one plant, and it's spread all over, which is great for me because I love them. But yeah, and then down below here, I was seeing a ton of aphids on this thing. Like you can see like these little white things are their little babies. It's dead. I sent those to the upper room with this, with this alcohol spray. But it also, the alcohol does stress out the plant. And so it's kind of a battle that I don't feel like fighting. This, these were just cuttings from a, an old plant. And if you recall, if you go back in old videos, these were just uh, leaves. You know, what I did was I took a leaf that was like this, a little bit longer, and I just cut it right here, and I stuck it in water, and it grew uh, roots, and that's this is the result like two months later. And again, it was only two months. You know, I could start over. This side, these were all jalapeno peppers that I had the, the bubble... If you see back here, let me show it, try to get it closer. Right there's a water gauge. And there was an air bubble in there, so the water was above the bubble. And so I thought there was water in the unit. It was completely bone dry and it killed all the, the peppers. So I'm gonna have to start over here. You know, this is like, and the reason why I like showing this stuff is I could be like those other YouTubers who will quietly replant and get starts, replant. And show everything beautiful and perfect uh, condition. You can see the, the you know I don't I don't scrub my you know vacuum and clean my deck every time I go to show my plants. I'm just showing my plants as the state that they're in. Because I think that's more useful to people. It was, it was to me. That's why I was very intimidated about gardening because I see all these people with these beautiful, glistening plants, and didn't realize that yeah they're showing their plants after they fed, watered beautified them, took all the bad leaves off, and pretend that that's how their plants grow. And that's not how their plants grow. Their plants have, you know, if you have a tomato plant, some of the leaves dry out. That's just natural, par for the course. And you just take them off like that. And so I'm showing you when they're like this and not when it's beautiful and I'm not spraying, I'm not going to sit there and mist this thing with water just so it looks pretty. But yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, it's kind of a bummer. I might give the uh, alcohol and the. I bought a bottle of a uh, of a uh, supposedly all natural uh, pesticide soap, which seems gross to me because I never had to wash my plants. I mean, wash my things when I ate them inside. I could just take them right off and eat them. Is my you know. My house doesn't have insecticide sprays or anything bad in it. You know, you just uh, 
maybe a little dust, but <laughs> it's not going to hurt nobody. But yeah. So I might completely clean these units out, start from scratch, just to make sure I'm free of the stupid pests. Because I don't want them in my house. And again, in a couple months, I'll be back to harvesting uh, whatever I'm growing. And I might just avoid growing tomatoes for uh, a while. Even though I love them, I'd rather, I'd rather grow peppers and things that they're not going to hang around for than uh, fight. You know, because this has been, like I said, I should have been, about now I should have been seeing tomatoes forming and on much shorter plants. You know, much shorter, bushier, happier plants, and this is, you know, this battle has made them stressed out, and it's stressing me out. <laughs> but not really. You know, like I said, I'm a cat gardener. I always expect this. Like I, like I told, tell people in, uh, you know, the, in hands, hands in the dirt's, uh, wind down Wednesday when you have the the garden confessions. I kill plants. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> but yeah. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm going to start a whole lot of uh, different things, and hopefully you'll follow along. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.